Thank you for joining us today. My name is Dawn and I am here to walk you through our HydroView software. The first thing you'll need to do is go to the Aquabotics website and download the software that you're going to be using on your computer. This is available on the downloads page on the www.aquabotics.com. Next, all you'll need to do is click on the HydroView icon to open up our HydroView app. Uh, to get started, I'm just going to walk you through a few of the menus just to give you a feel for the choices that you'll have within the app. Uh, the first is the Shortcuts menu, followed by the Options menu, Tools, Windows, and then Help. For this tutorial today, I am driving the HydroView using a game-style controller. And I'm able to access this panel through the Tools menu. Once you have the panel open, you're able to see what each button on the game controller is being used for. And you'll notice that it each has a drop-down menu lit up in green. Now the green indicates to you that the game style controller is properly connected to the vehicle. If it lit up in yellow for these drop-down menus, that means you're not properly connected. This is usually easily remedied by going in and changing the toggle switch on the back side of the controller towards the X. Once lit up in green, however, you're able to change any of these settings to whatever you're most comfortable with for driving um, in your hands. And each of these menus is able to change the settings pretty easily just with the click of a button. I also like to use this panel as a reminder of what each control is set at. Our next menu is the buttons menu. Uh, this is runs along the left hand side of the application screen. The first button is our easy button. Uh, once you turn this easy button on, it's going to continuously record the video feed as well as take snapshots at certain set intervals that you set in the user settings, as well as record all of the data from the sensors that are on board. Uh, standard would be depth, temperature, and orientation. While the easy button's working, you'll notice that these recording buttons do not function. Uh, they're just continuously running. The next button we're going to look at is our sensitivity button. This is what gives you power to the vehicle. So if you're running at 100% power, you're going to see that the vehicle is extremely sensitive. Uh, it runs very fast forward, makes very fast turns. You can program that down to 25% or even 50%. And for calm waters, I find 50 the most comfortable. Our next button that we're going to look at is the tilt camera button. Uh, this controls the tilt of a tilt camera, which is optional on our vehicles. You can go up 30 degrees or down 30 degrees from center. And this is great for when you're performing an inspection, you need to, need to look up at something like a ceiling or up at the underside of the boat or down at the bottom of the sea floor. Next button is our video recording. And you'll see as soon as I click that, you're going to get the recording symbol to come up to let you know that you are saving that video that you're looking at here. And then to turn it off, you just click back on it. And then you'll see our take a picture, just click, and you'll notice that you'll see a flash on the screen that's telling you that it did just take a picture for you. Then our data recording button. Uh, this is tracked you're recording all of the data from the different sensors built on board. And then next you'll see our highlight button. Uh, this highlight button highlights the data that you do in the recording to let you remember that this might be an important part of your inspection. And then last but not least, the LED lighting click on or off in the user settings here. Our next menu is on the right hand side of your screen and this is the heads up display. And this is going to give you feedback from the vehicle about a variety of pieces of information that the vehicle is reading while it's performing its work. And the first piece of information that we're going to start with here is our depth reading. And this is going to give you a reading in meters of how deep you are in the water, followed by your heading reading which is giving you your direction relative to true north uh, based on the degrees of the compass up to 360. Then you'll see roll, pitch. Those are both giving you the different dimensions of the vehicle based on the axes of roll and pitch, followed by your turn count. Now, turn count is a really important uh, piece of information to have while you're driving the vehicle around. This lets you know how many times you've turned in one direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. And this can be really helpful if you get lost underneath the water to find your way back to where you started. As you see here, as I'm turning, my turn count is going counterclockwise, so it's going in the negative direction. 
and as I turn in the clockwise direction, it will go back towards zero and then in the positive numbers. The next reading you're going to see is our temperature reading in degrees, followed by the amount of power that is left in the vehicle, and that's given to you in a percentage. Then you're going to see thrust, how much thrust percentage are you using to go forward. Vertical thrust is going to tell you how much thrust you're using to go up or down. And horizontal thrust, if I had a horizontal motor on this vehicle, would be controlling your left and right movement. Also here you'll see the disk space, which lets you know how much more recording space you have left on your vehicle, as well as the grabber controls. If there was a grabber arm on this vehicle, that's where you would see the feedback. The next menu that we're going to look at here is under the windows, and that's called our notes panel. And this is a place where you can save notes while you are out using the hydro view. Uh, the notes could be anything that you want to write that you want to remind yourself when you're going back to look at the data. Um, for example, I'm writing pay attention here, and all I need to do is click on the green check mark, and that will save that in my data settings. Um, this is great if you're out performing an inspection, you find something that you want to remember afterwards, and you think it might be hard to find in the video, you can save this in the notes section for future reference. Also under the Windows menu is our control panel. Um, this gives you the ability to change things like sensitivity, focus, all through that menu. Then our data panel, which is telling us information about the sensor data. Followed by our depth panel, and this is giving you a visual representation of the vehicle's depth. Grabber panel and lateral thrust panel would be if I had either of those, this particular vehicle does not. Followed by our orientation panel. And then our last but not least, our virtual joystick, which you should not use while you're using a game controller. But if you didn't have a game controller, you could use this virtual joystick for driving. Next, we're going to look at the vehicle web server. Uh, this is a place that you're going to go to look at your photos, videos, and data recordings. It's also a place where you can go to download. So to click download, all you need to do is click the green arrow and X would delete a video or a photo that you might have taken during your expedition out for the day. Um, very easy for you to be able to save it to your computer. Same thing with the data here. Um, you're able to download or even open up to take a peek at the data. And you're also able to take a peek here at different information from all of the sensors on a time-stamped basis. Um, these files are CSV files that you can download to your computer for further analysis. Also under the shortcuts menu, you'll see options including add a tag, which highlights the data for you to look at afterwards, as well as vehicle reboot and vehicle shutdown. Uh, those are to be used in an emergency. If for some reason the software stops responding, you can use that to reboot the vehicle. And last but not least, stop all, which would stop all controls for any movement of the vehicle to keep the vehicle still in the water. Under the options menu, all you'll need to be concerned with is the restore factory settings. And this is used when you need to go back to the original opening screen in case you get too many windows open or need to resize your window screen here. Next, under the tools menu, we're going to look at the bulk download capability. And this is great to use if you want to download more than one photo, video, or piece of data at a time. And all you need to do is select what you're looking at. I'm looking at movies here, which movies I want, and click download. That will then save these files to my computer. I can also use this to delete files in a bulk manner. Uh, this is really useful. Uh, when you come back, you might have quite a bit of data or videos that you have on there. And rather than sitting and watching one at a time, you can download a bunch of them to your computer. Also under tools, we're going to look here at the video utility repair. Um, this actually, if you for some reason have any problems with the video files on your computer, you can use this repair utility to fix them so that you're able to view them locally. Last under the tools menu here is our performance panel. And this is something you'd use with customer service if you're having any issues with your vehicle. Last but not least is the Utilities panel. Uh, utilities panel, first you'll notice up here at the top are the version numbers for the software that you're running on your computer, as well as the HydroView vehicle software. You want to make sure you're always running the most updated versions of that. 
So all you'll need to click is update vehicle WB and you want to make sure that you're matching the version numbers. Um, next you'll notice here is my picture timer. Picture timer tells us how many seconds between the intervals of when you're taking pictures using the easy button. So it could be a five second interval, it could be 10 second intervals, however often you think you might need the pictures. Uh, the next two thing you'll want to notice here on the utilities panel is calibrate depth. You should do this every time you go out for a mission so that you're starting at zero depth to probably be measuring that underneath the water. Followed by save pictures locally, which saves the pictures directly to your computer. If you'd rather save to the vehicle's memory stick, you may unclick that, as well as use metric system. Uh, again, if you want your data to be done in the English system, you could uncheck that box as well. There are a few other settings here in this menu, and all of those you would be using strictly when troubleshooting with the customer service department. That completes our tutorial for the day. If you have any further questions, please contact Aquabotics Customer Service at either support at aquabotics.com or 508-676-1000. Thank you.